Welcome to Fictionary. I'm your host, Deetra, and I'm so glad that you're here and that you are you. If this is your first time joining me, Fictionary is a place for you to sit back, relax, and escape reality for a few moments. Today's drink of choice is a cold brew coffee with oat milk and some cinnamon. Yummy. It's not quite hitting the mark yet. Um, I'm still super duper tired. I don't know why I'm so tired. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll take a little nap and then I'll feel better afterwards. Anyway. All right, guys. Full discretion. <laughs> I actually prepared my notes in uh, advance and then... I went and took a nap um, before recording, and I thought it was going to be like 30 minutes, maybe an hour tops, and I wound up sleeping for like three hours. Um, So my friend, Caitlin, she says that three hours is a nap. I disagree. I say that that was not a nap. I slept. I slept for three hours. I was sleeping. That was sleep. Um, So what constitutes a nap for you? Do you think, you know, just a short quickie like or you need a little bit more time? I personally think anything over 30 minutes is no longer a nap. You are now entering into sleeping territory. Um, Anyway, now that we, I'm feeling pretty rested up, I'm ready to go, and I'm excited because today is our lucky 13th episode. Woo! 13 episodes in! Can't believe it. Anyway, in honor of it being the 13th episode, um, a number that, you know, some people have some pretty strong opinions about. I personally, it's like, it's a number. It's a pretty decent number. But, you know, 13 gets a pretty bad rap. So we're going to do a little history note lesson on the number 13 and why people just talk so badly about the number 13. So I went to history uh, history.com. So you guys are probably familiar with the History Channel, right? Um, anyways, this is their website, and I got the following information. So please enjoy. So the fear of the number 13 and specifically Friday the 13th is known as Paris Gavita Katria phobia. It could be Paris Gavita Katria phobia. I don't know. It's really long and I'm sure I've butchered the pronunciation, but whatever. Anyway, according to researchers, it's estimated that about 10% of the U.S. population, so 10% of the people running around our country um, here in the United States of America, America, um, have this condition. They're scared of the number 13. And it's so bad that they've done um, some estimations of the financial losses that could be attributed to the fear of the number 13, and it totals to about 8 hundred million dollars so and this is annually not just 800 million dollars like in total 800 million dollars a year and it's because people won't get married on that day they won't travel on that day and then in some like really severe cases of periscovita catria phobia they won't work right um so it's pretty cool because history.com like they give you some of the the early myths and so I thought this was pretty interesting. One of the earliest myths that surround the fear of the number 13 actually comes from the Code of Hammurabi. And so just a quick little snippet bite. The Code of Hammurabi is this ancient Babylonian legal text that was written by King Hammurabi and it was sometime in the 1700s BC. So the thing is old, okay? Um, And you might recognize it just a little bit because the phrase an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is attributed to the code of Hammurabi um so you guys have probably heard that phrase right so talk about going viral like you say one thing or say something and it's remembered for so many years after insanity but anyway um back to the number 13 so allegedly the code omitted a 13th law from its list of legal rules and so that's where people were like "Ooh, 13 is a bad number according to the code of Hammurabi but the reality is is that one of like the earliest translators of the text they you know maybe they were like me feeling a little tired that day and they made a little bitty boo 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 and had a typo and they missed that line of text okay And the reality is that the code, it doesn't even list the laws numerically. They are not uh, counted. So it's not like code one, two, three, four. There's no numbers. So it was just that line got left out. Um, So it was, you know, attributed, but it's 
false news, fake news, guys. Um, some other old theories that revolve around the number 13 are about dinner guests. So the first one you guys will recognize is Judas Iscariot. He was the betrayer of Jesus. Um, and coincidentally or not, the 13th and the absolute worst guest at the Last Supper. Okay, um, we all know the betrayal of Judas with the kiss to Jesus. Or, I mean, I don't want to assume we all know, but yeah, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss and then turned him over um, to be tor- tortured and brutalized. Um, yeah, so yeah, Judas was a fake friend, guys. Um, the other guest that you guys might recognize, you might recognize him from Marvel, who has popularized uh, this character, and it's good old Loki. Okay, he was the 13th guest at this fancy dinner party at Valhalla, and he totally threw off the feng shui of the whole thing, and he upset the balance of the 12 gods that were already in attendance. So it was perfectly balanced with just the 12. Loki showed up, and it threw everything off. Um, so those are some other theories that revolve around the number 13 and have given it that attribution of being unlucky, right? So really, the fear of the number 13 is something that only us people in the West have. And you probably you might have seen it yourself because about 80 percent of the high rise buildings in the United States do not have a 13th floor. This is crazy. um, But according to the statistic, it's 80 percent of the high rise buildings do not have a 13th floor. So you probably have seen it if you've been in a high rise building or at least enough of them. Um, also hospitals, airports, they avoid using the number. Um, so you won't see like a gate 13 in a lot of airports. You won't see a floor 13 or room 13 in hospitals. Um, it's pretty intense. Okay. Um, but this is again, something that's common in the West, but you know, the number 13 has a sister and 13's unfortunate sister is the number four. And in East and Southeast Asia, tetraphobia, so much easier to say, right? Um, the fear of the number four is the boogeyman. And you will find like similarly to the U.S. where there's no 13th floor, there's no fourth floor in high rise buildings and um, hospitals, airports, etc. The number four is the bad guy. Um, and it's because I guess um, in Chinese language, I can't remember which which dialect, but um, the word for four and the word for death are very similar. And so they got a bad rap. It's a bad number. Bad number. Bad omens. Okay. Um, but back to 13. You know, not everybody thinks that the number 13 was a bad luck number. In ancient Egypt, the number 13 was actually considered a lucky number. And I personally don't believe in luck, good or bad, Um, but I'm going to go ahead and run with that narrative. I don't think 13 is an unlucky number, and I'm actually super hyped that we're celebrating the 13th episode of Fictionary. Um, It blows my mind that Fictionary is 13 episodes in, and you know, I have been loving doing this, and I'm really excited because I have some plans coming up, and We're going to be expanding and doing some new things for you and for the kiddos. And, you know, I will give you guys like a little heads up. I started a new job, which I mentioned before, and it's been a little bit rough in the transition. So I'm a little bit backed up because I've been and I've also been super tired. You know, I just feel like I'm full of excuses today. Guys, just forgive me. Anyway, um, but it has been a little bit rough with the transition. It was a great move. I'm excited about it. But, you know, going from being the expert at my job to learning everything all over again is way more stressful and way more challenging than I remember it being. <laughs> but it's been a while since I've been in the position of having to relearn everything. But I know it's only just a little bit of matter of time before I start to feel confident or at least confident-ish in my new role. So, you know, I'm just going to keep swimming and keep on doing what I'm doing and, you know, bring some fun stuff here because I 
love doing this and I love uh, spending this time with you guys. Anyway, I think it's time that we go ahead and we get into our stories for today. So everybody put on your listening ears because we are about to do three original short fiction stories. They are 100 words or less. I will give you the title of the story, the genre, the word or the character and the action and these are all original stories written by me and those were the prompts uh, that were randomized from these little spinning wheels that I created and wrote these stories so let's get it started our first story for today is entitled bazinga the genre is crime caper the word is poor and the action is digging a hole hurry up bucky I grit to my partner as he shovels into the frozen soil. I survey the park. We've been out here every night searching for the rumored entrance to an underground passageway into the Louvre. The map says the entrance is here in the Square du Vert Galant Park. I see a light approaching in the distance and growl at Bucky. He shrugs and continues digging. The light moves dangerously closer. Mad Bucky! Say that perche! I prepare to run when the telltale hollow metallic ring sounds through the park. Bazinga! The poor bastards won't know what hit them. The end. All right, Bucky and a uh, cohort, they're about to rob the Louvre. Uh, uh, I like a good uh, crime caper. No, I mean, I wouldn't actually be a cat burglar, but. Sometimes their little escapades are fun. (laughs) All right, we're going to go ahead and get into our next story. Our second story is titled Monday Again. Yay. The genre is comedy. The word is empty. And the action is ignoring someone. I yawn and stretch leisurely. For once, I am up before my alarm. Ever so slowly, I open my eyes. Why is it full light? I grab my phone and the shit hitteth the fan. I am late! I burst out of bed, scurry to the bathroom, and splash water on my pits and my lady bits. I pull on some clothes and run to the kitchen to make a quick cup. Empty. I hear my partner calling me, but I have no time. I'll call later. I stub my toe getting into the car. I arrive at work. It's Saturday. The end. Oh, oh, we've all had those days. I've woken up on the weekend and thought it was a work weekday and woken up in a panic. So that was what inspired this. Um, If only she had stopped to listen to whatever her partner was trying to tell her. Probably like, come back to bed. It's only Saturday. But she was on the move and wound up at work and no one else was there. (laughs) All right, we're going to get into our next story, our final story for today. Our third and final story for today is entitled, I Totally Paused. The genre is apocalyptic, the word is superficial, and the action is watching a movie. The wound is superficial, Birdie. We should keep going. My sister's face crumples as she tries to convince me to keep fighting. Numbness slowly creeps through me and I know she's wrong. I... I'm changing. I turn up the volume on the small TV I have decided to die in front of. Clueless is playing, and I try to remember the time before. I feel cold. She grabs my hand, begging me. I feel hungry. Is this what the rest of the world felt? She's crying now. Cher runs a stop sign. I twitch. It's time. Run, Maya. The end. Ooh, guys. This one, like, hits because it makes me think of my sister, and I'm just like, oh, oh my gosh, I would never. That's so sad. Like, or anybody that you love, and then, like, them wanting to be with you, and, like, but you're undergoing a transition 
into zombie mode. Hey, creepy. Anyway, all right, guys, that was our last story for today. I hope that you enjoyed our Lucky 13 episode. I know it was a little bit different, but the number 13 has a bad rap, and now we know why. I personally disagree. I don't know if you do, but hey, a number is just a number. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Um, I have some exciting things coming up, so make sure to be on the lookout. And until next time, keep on reading.